Hello, I'm Sam from Jessup Says. The focus of my channel is to share and educate on how to buy less, buy better. It's not necessarily about buying less things, it's about buying something that fits its purpose perfectly and serves you for as long as possible. I had actually intended today's video to be the much requested update on the Crown Northampton sneakers. I've been wearing them a bit more recently, but basically we're having a sort of winter in summer here in Melbourne. So it's been pretty gross and rainy and I haven't really had a chance to wear my nice white sneakers outside and I don't really want to get them completely drenched. As an outcome, I actually put on today's boots the other day in the middle of summer and I'm wearing a, you know, a merino turtleneck also in the middle of summer, at least supposedly. And I had such a great time wearing those boots the other day that I thought that they actually deserved a video whilst I wait and wear the sneakers a bit more. If there was ever a boot that was deserving of being so iconic that it deserved being the definition of often imitated, never duplicated, it would be the Edward Green Galloway. And honestly, that's about the best intro to this video that I can give. These boots have been made the way they're being made today using this beautiful pattern, this beautiful design for almost a hundred years and over those hundred years pretty much every single boot maker has made their version of it but none have done it better or at least none in my opinion Starting off with a lovely quote here from the website, a sort of really knowing one. We've been making the Galway boot for the best part of a century, once called the Pattern 1836. The Galway is instantly recognizable from the distinctive arrowhead curve on its side. Both practical and full of character, the Galway has gained iconic status as the ultimate derby boot. Edward Green are clearly aware of their cult status. Anyway, on to the detail of the pair that I ended up getting. So the style is the Galway, the color that I got was burgundy antique calf with clove suede on the shaft and they're of course made by Edward Green which is in Northampton UK. Further to the leather materials they also feature Edward Green lining, Edward Green toe plates and HAF leather soles or half leather soles. The construction is Goodyear welted, they feature dark brown sole edging, the cap toe stitching is a stitching but not a second piece of leather so it's a fake cap toe I suppose you'd say. They obviously feature the arrowhead swoopty, there's a scallop heel counter. The boot features a mix of single and double row stitching which is quite interesting. There's also a single piece gusseted tongue and four eyelets and four speed hooks. The fit of this boot that I got is an 82E last and I have a size 6.5 to 7 UK. The cost of these is nothing short of eye-watering honestly with shoe trees, toe plates and the MTO made to order surcharge which probably could have been avoided but this was in the middle of the pandemic so there was no trunk shows or Edward Green locations available for me to access here in Australia. So the total was 3,000 and 35 Australian dollars which is 2100 USD but the boots alone cost 2295 Australian dollars which is around 1600 USD or just under that. First, the history and heritage of Edward Green as a shoemaker. Edward Green has been handcrafting shoes in Northampton since 1890 and has established a reputation for producing some of the finest footwear in the world. The company has maintained its commitment to traditional shoemaking techniques, using only the finest materials and crafting each of its pairs of shoes by hand. Edward Green has a rich heritage and the Galloway boot is a testament to the company's commitment to producing timeless, elegant footwear that is built to last. The Galloway boot is named after the city of Galway which is in the west coast of Ireland and is known for its rugged natural beauty. The Galway boot was originally called the 1836 which is not a reference to the year it was first made as Edward Green themselves only started in 1890. My guess though is it is actually a reference to when it was made but it's probably more likely to have been made in 1936 not 1836 or around about the time of the Second World War. During the Second World War Edward Green like many shoemakers in Northampton England and shifted its focus to producing primarily military footwear for the British Armed Forces. Edward Green was the leading maker of officers boots for the British military and became renowned for being the boots that you wanted to get, particularly this boot, the Edward Green Galway, which became iconic. Today they still make boots the same way and have a reputation that extends back to these origins as making some of the highest quality and best looking boots in the world. 
Onto the fit, these boots are a 6.5 to 7 UK and are built on the 82E last, which they describe as a slim, elegant, almond shaped toe. And shape wise, it's absolutely beautiful. It's probably one of the best looking almond lasts I've ever seen and is definitely one of the reasons why no one can truly copy this boot. Though the boot does come on other lasts, all of Edward Green lasts are just super, super perfect, super, super refined. Probably one of the most important reasons why people love these boots so much. They are just insanely comfortable. The last, or this particular last, the 82, feels very anatomical, which in this case means that it works really well to accommodate the shape of my feet within the last, not having my feet sort of pushing out to expand into the liver. So my foot is really nicely encapsulated within that last. And because of that, they're extremely comfortable as a boot. And they're probably the most comfortable ready to wear boot that I own. Another reason why they are so comfortable is because of the materials. Now, are there sort of two ways to do a Galway in terms of the materials? The first one, the one that I chose, is to make it and wear it as a sort of semi-casual boot that can be dressed up easily. Choose something like sleek last and sleek materials, like the 82 last and a mix of smooth leather and calf and suede. The other way to wear them is in the country style, which would be something like a nice grained leather, thick rubber studded soles, maybe a pebble grain leather, and if these boots didn't cost what they cost there is no question that I would have a pair of the grained ones already that country vibe with maybe a more chunky last is absolutely incredible and once those are worn in and there's a particular pair of rosewood country calf ones that I'm thinking of hopefully I can find some photos to share for you you can see just how beautiful this sort of country boot aesthetic can be but that's not what I chose for my pair well not this pair anyway so as for my pair the materials I ordered are absolutely absolutely one of the reasons why I love these boots. In small part because of the color, but also because how they're lasting and how with fairly high wear over the last two years or so, they've had almost no wear. They look pretty much brand new. And I wanted to speak about the color because this is probably a fairly unique color combination and that's because it was a custom pair, not off the rack. And I went through a huge range of different colors before eventually making the choice that I made. I specifically wanted a burgundy boot, not a brown boot. I went through a range of different swatches over email Email with Charles at Double Monk here in Melbourne. After much deliberation, we chose the Burgundy Antique Calf with the clove suede on the shaft. The Burgundy Antique is their top quality hide, which features their signature burnishing on the toe. Basically a nice dark tone that fades out gradually along the toe before the toe cap. Then we have the clove suede, which is sort of a ready burgundy shade that matches the calf extremely well, in my opinion. The highs themselves are extremely high quality, and after two years of genuinely high wear, these look barely warm. The hides are healthy and they look tight all over. There's barely any crease, but in a sort of weird way, they have taken on the shape of my foot, even so. The suede is also extremely soft and the nap on it is very fine. It makes them extremely comfortable around the ankles. As for the material's origins, well, after a bit of sleuthing online, I believe that most, if not all, Edward Green's hides typically are from Tannery Haas, which is located in France. It's one of the leading producers of leather in Europe and is known for producing high quality leather for luxury footwear and accessories and leather goods. They also are known for using a lot of very natural products in the Italian process like chestnut, mimosa, quay braccio. Yep, I mean all weird things, but they're much better than chromium salts, which is the alternative. Tannery Haas have some other fairly unusual habits as well, like the fact that every calf that they use or every hide that they get in is from a French cow. And they tend to come from the country's main cattle farming areas, the Doro Joan, Doro Joan, and the fields of Brittany. In terms of cows, there are two main types that produce the nicest types of hides. This is the Charo Lice and the Montbilliard, which is sought out by farmers not only for the quality of the hide, but also the quality of the meat. It's probably why these skins that you see on my Edward Green pair are so incredibly tight and so incredibly good looking. Now, I know that there's a lot going on here in terms of the materials, but it would be silly of me not to go through one of the reasons why I actually love these boots, because that is the half leather sole. The half leather is basically a double sole in the front part where you're actually making contact with the ground, and then it tapers down to a single sole in the middle of your foot, which is where you want the shoe to be nice and flexible and bent, which makes for an extremely comfortable boot, but one that's also very, very long lasting and has that sort of increased durability of the double sole in the front. The quality of the hides that they use for these soles are oak bark tanned, which means that they're best quality hides and they show very, very little wear based on how many kilometers that I 
I've definitely put these through. Also, I tend to wear them a lot in the wet, which might be surprising because they definitely just look completely fine and they've handled it without any kind of problem. In terms of wearing shoes in the wet, I will always prefer and choose a leather sole or high quality leather sole over a rubber sole, which sometimes I can just slip and slide like ice and I never really have a lot of confidence in a rubber boot. Honestly, I can't recommend the half sole enough. The one point of the construction that I wanted to call attention to is the arrowhead detail, which on Galway boot is its unique design element that adds a sort of touch of sophistication to the rugged silhouette of the boot. The detail is created by punching two parallel lines into the leather, creating a triangle shape that resembles an arrowhead. In this design, the original design, the suede goes under the calf, and you can see that the twin stitch needles are on the calf side of the skin, and you can also see the arrowhead is pointing down towards the ground. I am mentioning this so specifically because other boots have different combinations of how that whole area looks. It's the part that they copy on the Galway boot, but they don't always do it in the same way. The arrow can go up or it can go down. The primary materials can be in different combinations of how they overlap, it all varies. But this combination is the original and therefore the best. I don't know. Well, I think it's the nicest in terms of the balance and flow and I can speak that the comfortability that it provides or seems to provide is really worth it. It's very cool detail. Now I don't want to bore everyone with endless construction details about Goodyear belting shoes and all of that. So there is really only one other thing that I think is really quite surprising about these boots and anyone who I talk to about owning these boots is actually surprised by the same thing and that is how incredibly light they are. So I decided to weigh a few pairs of boots and shoes and see if that's actually true or if it just feels like it. Starting off with my Crocodile Jones Sky which weigh in at a hefty 684 grams followed by my LHS by Alden Loafer, which is basically a slipper, so I'm expecting it to be very light, which weighs in at 412 grams. I then wanted to do the RM Williams because people always talk about how comfortable the RM Williams boots in, so I figured they might be a nice and light boot, and they weighed in at 536 grams, the exact same weight as what the Galways actually ended up at. The Galways managed to do it with a double sole in the front and the Galways are actually made entirely of leather. Whereas the Iron Williams boots are actually made of a combination of lightweight rubber and even kangaroo skin, which is known to be quite a lot thinner and then logically maybe more light than the cow skins that Edward Green used. So for them to be the same weight, although the Edward Green boot feels really light, I don't know, it's just a super, super lightweight boot, which makes it a very comfortable boot. And I think the moral of the story is that if you want a comfortable boot, maybe look for a lightweight boot is not a bad idea. It can't be a coincidence that two of the most iconic boots of the modern era are also incredibly light. This video seems to have gone on a bit long, so I think we'll just skip how I wear them this time around, because needless to say, there's gonna be a few more videos on these boots to come in the future, because they're just such great pairs of boots and I just love them and wanna talk about them, I suppose. Let me know if there's anything you wanna know about them or anything you wanna know about my experience in owning them. I'm curious to hear what everyone wants to know about owning a pair of Edward Green Galways, because I realize that at that price, they're not really accessible. If it's not immediately obvious, I love these boots. They are so beautiful to look at. The whole pattern and design is just perfect. They're super lightweight and comfortable and the materials that Edward Green used are some of the best that I have ever owned. Sure, they cost five arms, two legs, a liver and your signature for an undisclosed future task, but honestly, it's probably worth it. I just hope that my future kids have small enough feet to enjoy my long-term investment strategy. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Links in the description as always and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.